Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to another episode of conversation with freedom today i'm joined by a very 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 special guest his story is so 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 amazing and very inspiring is from is is from is from Mauritius is a professional speaker in mental health and is currently in in in, in Australia me, me, Mr Dupac welcome to my podcast very good thanks man for oh, for those people who don't know who the pack is please take us away back give us a little bit, a little bit of background of who you are and what you do let me as of all thanks a lot for the invite today to to share my story who i am and what I'm doing and what I'm going to do next. So first of all, I just say, um, well, my name is Deepak and I come from Mauritius. I was born there and I'll, I live in Australia in Perth now. And well, for the last 18 years, let me just bring you back who I am in 1999. Yeah. I was still back in high school, April 1999. I was diagnosed bipolar by my doctor back in Mauritius. And he prescribed me different type of medication that was a, had a big negative impact on my whole body, mm -hmm. my psychological, physiological, everything, my mental, and I was completely rejected by society. And I was banned from school. And I was still like, that was the year I was turning 18. Ooh. And I had new friends, and but I had one little one for Sharky. She was my third baby, Sharky, who was coming every morning just to say that she loves me in her dog language. Wow. 2002, I want, I'm just going into more in this, yeah. not in details. 2002, I came to Australia. And when I came to Australia, I went to a, my first doctor and my first doctor, he continued the same medication that my doctor in Mauritius prescribed me. Okay. And it was so easy for him because it was just like going home. And also my mom was just coming, coming to Perth very often, especially a bit before the exams. Yeah. And that was, I was coming more and more chubby, rejected mm -hmm. by the Perth community. In 2014, I went to England to see my sister, okay. to see her third baby. Yeah. And then I met my mom's big brother, who is a doctor. He said to me, why don't you carry out some tests to find out what is happening to you? Mm. And went back home, which is Perth today, and the first, I mean, the doctor said to me that I was wrongly diagnosed after carrying out some tests also, some blood oh. tests and some, and I was diagnosed, wrongly diagnosed since 1999. Oh. But it was a big, massive shock. And that was not the end of everything. Mm. And just like 2019 i met three beautiful people okay one of them is called christian and sam Corton from a speakers institute they came to perth and roof they came in to perth to sell the course for the boot camp who yeah. wants to be a speaker yeah and i went i raised my hand without knowing what i was doing mm. to go to sydney which is about six hours flight from here. Yeah. And I was uh, really completely 
I didn't know what I was doing, but I had a dream when I was a kid to be a speaker. Wow. That was my dream. Yeah. And so I sh shared my story, which was called The Power of Love, about how my mom played a big role in my change. Yeah. Soon after the boot camp in Sydney, I went to continue my course as called The Protégé, where I completed the course successfully where in May 2021, yeah. just because of the COVID, things had to change the date. During that time, I shared my story for 12 minutes. I have gained more and more confidence on what, who I am today. Mm -hmm. And I've gained like a rebirth. And today I can inspire by sharing to people, you have to bring the joy and happiness. That's great. I launched my website, dipaksaha.com, which has reached a hits on more than 27. And I want to go in more in details about the website. But half myself, I gave back to myself where I was. When I got back to Perth, I, I soon started my journey back into a master. Mm -hmm. where I became one of the AI directors in the city of Perth, okay. shared my, my journey more. Mm -hmm. And today I'm just being invited by several podcast channels mm -hmm. to share my story. Yeah. Because my story is something which is more a story which is here to inspire yeah. not only me or not only you, but the whole world. Because yes. medication is not something that is used, is not something that you can use to cure people solely. Mm. I acknowledge that amount of physical fitness, the amount of which helps you to get back who you are. Mm. And because that endorphin helps you to be happy, to be positive, to be humble and what you do. Yeah. No matter what you do in life, bring always a joy and happiness to someone. Yeah. And this is who is Deepak. Up to you now. Okay. <laughs> um, please, I, I, I want to get to know something. After you found out that you've been misdiagnosed, uh, did you talk to to your first doctor, did you, what, did, did you even consult him and tell him that, man, you got it, you got it all wrong? What did you do? Well, I didn't tell him anything because I live here. I mean, I'm I live in Perth now. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't tell him anything, but he knows it already. Wow. Mauritius is a very small country. Okay. And I shared okay. this openly on social media oh. about how I was wrongly diagnosed. Because things get repeated. Yeah. And also it gets like shared. I had uh, one of my friends uh, back in Mauritius. Her name is Rebecca. She had an interview. She's a, she, she has a podcast channel also. Yeah. She interviewed me last year before I went to, um, to Sydney to do my finals for he shared my story yeah. and I shared my part of it and things get repeated oh. and it merges much, much smaller than South Africa. Yeah. And yeah. so we just like people, once we say something, it gets repeated quickly. So, do you, do yeah. you do you hold anything against him or are you okay with the fact that you got it wrong? If I just owe him a grudge, yeah. this is going to be owing to myself. Oh. Because I don't want to think about him. Yeah. He's not here in my thinking process. Yes. Because what if he's in my thinking process, I'm holding it in me. Yeah. Life goes on. Mm. But that when you know that music, life goes on place. Yeah. So in a way that I'm not going to put him 
I won't say I hold him a grudge yeah. or I'm upset or anything, yeah. but I don't think about it oh. because I have already bypasses my whole life. I mean, my whole system yeah. not here to, to think about him and just to, it's just like we go on, mm. life goes on. Mm. And I have more important thing to think about. Yeah. Like today I'm being interviewed by yourself. Yeah. I'm not here. I'm just yeah. here to, in a way, to share this to the whole planet yes. because this is something which is really something which is a really a crisis mm. that doctors or anyone, or especially when you are just because you are higher up on a higher qualification or to a patient because he's in a vulnerable situation, mm. you are allowed to you are allowed to to put any words. And that person can just, he's just like the submissive person and just accept, accept whatever he says. Mm -hmm. But today, one thing I'll tell you, not to be rude or anything, yeah. it's important to you, we always, not to forgive, but we just put it aside. Because these type of things, yeah. if we think about him, it's going to affect us. Yeah. 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 If, what kind of advice would you give to someone who is actually having a tough time? Someone who just found out that he or she has, has been mis, misdiagnosed. Because your case is not the only case. Actually, I'm I'm assuming that there are a lot of different people who, who encounter maybe the same thing. So what kind of advice would you give to to someone maybe who just found out that he, he or she was misdiagnosed and like her whole life was maybe she yeah what kind of advice do you give to, to someone who's going through that i think it's um uh, the big advice that someone can do yeah. is always surround yourself with positive people mm. who are here not to pamper you mm. or just to encourage you, yeah. but someone who is going here to uplift you, mm. to give you the right path to take in life. To be wrongly diagnosed, it's believed that more than 80% of people are wrongly diagnosed mm. on any sicknesses worldwide. Yeah. It's it's a it's a very much alarming figure. Mm. But once you discover that you were just wrongly diagnosed, it's important that you surround yourself with happy people. Because people who are here to put you in the right path. When I was diagnosed, wrongly diagnosed and discovered in 2014, I surrounded myself with people who are here to push me, to encourage me, to give me all the word that I can just do. When I met these three people that I mentioned before to you, mm. these three people, Sam, who is a lead on the Speakers Institute, and this beautiful lady, who I consider today as my sister, Christiane. These people gave it to me. In a way, hold your hands. And Sam, in a way that he knew that what I was going through. But Christiane being here also, and she gave it to me. I didn't know her. Yeah. But it's just to surround yourself with people who, can, who knows about your weaknesses. And I knew that my journey, in a way, but I didn't know that I can speak like I'm speaking to you today. Yeah. Because one of the things that I was, I was wrongly diagnosed, and a wrongly diagnosed person, he goes from a, his brain doesn't work. Mm. He's, he's here physically. I mean, his heart is beating, Ish. but he's not physically, like mentally here. Yeah. He's absent. Yeah. That's so bad. You, you've mentioned something. You, you've You've, you've told us that you were being rejected by 
society, you were being rejected by the people around you. What kind of, maybe if I were to put it, what kind of advice would you give to the community who's maybe rejecting someone? What kind of message would you, or what kind of change would you like to see in our communities towards, especially towards people who are maybe, who, who have mental health or who are going, who, who we normal, or we don't think they are maybe not like us. What kind of advice would you give to, or what kind of message or change would you like to see towards communities or societies, towards people who are actually maybe having bipolar disorder or what kind of, I'm not sure if you get my question. Well, it's a very good, um question because I'm working on this project currently now. Yeah. I mean, not now, now, but I'm just working on it. Yeah. But the best way to do is that you have to show the empathy to people. <clears throat> because to begin with, because I know mental health, I don't know any disease apart from mental health. Mental health has no colors. Oh. There is no age, that's no gender. Mm. Anyone can catch that mental health anytime on their life. Ooh. It can be from stress from school, stress from family breakup or anything. Mm. It's, it's the list is very long, but I've just been like two of them, <laughs> like education and also a breakup. Now, Society is known to be a very much materialistic way of looking at things. Mm -hmm. I know it well from my bringing up when I was a kid, when I had my bipolar, to how much money you're making or what clothes you're wearing, what yeah. is your neighbor wearing. Yeah. Is trying to compare. We like to this word of comparing with everything. Mm -hmm. In the year 2000, the whole world went through the COVID. Yeah. No countries were spared. I mean, I'm not trying to be nasty, but yeah. Australia, South Africa, Mauritius, anywhere in the world were we caught. That was the time turning point when people started to talk about mental health. Mm, true. And that was my time when my story started to grow. Mm. Because it was at the same time when I shared my story. I won't say I have chosen this time. And no, it's just, it's, it's just like, it's the same time period. The timeline, if you grow it, you'll see it. Yeah. But when I went back on my Bible, my my story in 1999 i was completely rejected by society because i had a big belly oh. i had a big i had a big chicken fat chicken leg and people i'll tell you one thing today yeah. they are very cruel on the way they say things mm. because they don't know this concept that mental health has no colors or gender or age. Mm. And that went on, like people, they just mimic you, mock you, like anything. I was given names like retarded. Mm. Uh, people who are just like, who they know, they, they think they're too perfect for Mauritius. Mm. People called me fat. Mm. I was called different type of names. And this type of thinking process, it's a very much show that how people can be so shallow. And people have to grow. Now, this was just my introduction of your question. Now, to answer your question, people should be more in a way, they should be, it's a failure of what we saw in the last few years, I mean, the last maybe 30 years, yeah. for the failure of the system, education system. 
people are more aware, like I said, of a modest thing, what a, how much money or how, what, uh, what a, which car you have or anything. Mm -hmm. But there's a values of people has gone. Do you know, like yes. our time, our parents, with a, with a respect, yeah. good, good morning. But this is what, what is gone now. And now myself, because now, the, well, in Perth, the mass is gone now. I always say to people, based what we call the smile. You have to build a beautiful eye contact with people. Mm -hmm. Like you, you mentioned to me about the camera before. Yeah. But the camera is a bit like your eyes. You have to look at it. Oh. Because it shows that respect, but you have not only to the person asking you a question, yeah. but also to a person listening to you. Because what it builds is a confidence. But people have no confidence at all on, we talk about mental health, like I'm talking about, say, for my home country. Mental health is a big stigma still. Mm -hmm. And it was going to grow like anything. Mm -hmm. And people are just, they can put any statements. And it hurts inside. I know so many people, many, many people I know who are suffering from this type of problems. It's getting worse because society doesn't allow that room to bring that good vibes to people. Mm -hmm. If a love to someone, like my book, Be Inspired by Strangers, that I'm writing on, yeah. It's something which I'm sharing about half my journey. It's not like that I'm going to write that retarded or fat or anything, but it's up to people to stand up and provide that love to people. Yeah. It can't be only your child, or even your child is, you, you just put down. It can touch anyone, my dear. It is something that people who have mental health issues, yeah. We already had some issues, but when you put these words, you have triple issues. Oh. Because you're putting that word, that nasty thing, and trying to be funny in a way, but thinking it's something which is important. Do you look at this? Mm -hmm. This is my way. I mean, this is how I see things of a spectrum. Oh. If you were to go back in time, what would you change? If I want to go back in time? Yeah, what would you change? What would you change? I won't be able to. It's just like I want to, to live in a way that people are happy. Hmm. I won't say having money, but people are happy and positive. And I want to, I want to say that I went to the wrong thing because the mental health, my mental health story, it has what has defined me today. Mm. Who are you inspired by? I'm inspired, I'm inspired by my late grandfather. Why? My late grandfather, he's the only one who believed in me. Mm. He's the only one. He's no longer in this world, but he's the one who used to believe in me. He's, he gave it to me, like, I mean, physically I look like him. Yeah. And one of the things that he's, uh, it's my mom, mom's uh, father. So in a way that he always had a good, good words every time, even like in front of strangers or even like in front of my parents, he had the guts to share that good vibes. Mm -hmm. He is someone that the Lord has given him, but he's someone that you have to really, I have really still admire for him. If, if, if he was here today, what would you tell him? 
well, I mean, it's just like, uh, I think once, um, what I would say to him is that thank you. Mm -hmm. Because he, from my birth, he knew it. I'll be someone. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not someone, 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 but he, he knew that I'll be someone. Wow. Do you feel successful, Mr. Deepak? Successful has two meanings, okay. economically or non-economically. I'll say that I'm very happy what I am. Oh. I'm just very happy. I'm self-contented of myself. Yeah. And um, just like uh, day by day, I see the change in me. Mm. And I just, I just, I won't say day by day. Sorry, I'm sorry. Minute by minute. It's like I see like a, a growing process. And by growing process, it's an ongoing thing, but I feel it more because I just get a beautiful society that has given to me that second chance at global birth, Australia. And I see it every day because I, I travel by train. I mean, I go to the city in Perth, I go to the gym, HPF Arena, and also I drive and just like my family, and I also just like what I see today is that I bring it. And also I'm in Toastmaster and also I just, I just grow like anything because now I'm just like getting more and more comfortable in myself. Yeah. And this, to answer your question, successful, I'm very happy. I won't say successful because it's a very, I mean, ongoing process. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. You went through a lot. You went through a lot. You went through rejection. You went through criticism. How do you deal with them? Do you know, when I had my rejection, yeah. I didn't have any defensing tool with myself. Okay. I didn't know how to defend myself. And I was not able to defend. And I think I did the best way mm -hmm. because you can't reply back to people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's just like the saying, when the dog barks, don't try to, to bark at him. Or just be <laughs> <your worst. laughs> what I did the best was to be a speaker today. Yeah. And when I became a speaker, it's the time that was just like a turning point of my life. Mm -hmm where I was completely isolated in the society. I was in my room, I was always like sleeping till like maybe two or three o'clock. Yeah. But I was completely in a way that I didn't know what I was doing. But that was a time. But today I can share my story, I can share to people because I've gained confidence. Yeah. And the number one thing that, especially girls or anyone in society, okay. Yeah. What they look on you is confidence. Mm. Once you have a confidence, it's like a domino effect. The 52 card falls down. The, the, the domino, uh, 52 dominoes goes down. Yeah. But it, what is important to bring that love to people. And today, what I can say, but like you asked me, do I have anything? I don't owe any grudge on people because I'm going to be like deserving myself. Mm. Mm. So... It's myself, I just go on and be happy. What's the, yeah. what's, what's the dream from, for, for, for the park? Where would you like to see yourself in the next five or 10 years? Well, I want to lecture, maybe I want to go to see back, but the world is going to be slowly, slowly getting back to normal. I want to uh, give lectures worldwide and I want to share my story. Yeah. Like I'm doing with you today, and but I want to be more on site and give that lecture, mm -hmm. and also just launch my book. Okay. And where okay. myself, and just want to be happy with my family and my kids and everything. Yeah. You've just you've just launched your podcast. Please tell us more about your podcast. Well, 
Thank you. The, the podcast is a, it's a new project that I'm working. Okay. It's called What's Next? What's Next? So now, when I told you about my website, I didn't share more about it. DeepakSaha.com, which is my website, which is currently active online, is, has made its point. I won't say I won't remove it, everything. But it's done, it's maturity, and everything is very good. Okay. But I saw that lack of, because I love talking, mm -hmm. and I want to be more involved, more connecting with people worldwide. Yeah. Not only here, I mean, not only in South Africa or in Mauritius. And I want to share my story in a way that I can do, bring myself. So I came up with a job uh, because I already have the, all the apparatus here, which is yeah. here. It's like the podcast uh, thing. And I said, I want to, to get myself a podcast. Okay. Uh, and and I said it to just, I wanted to build it. Hmm. So on Monday, I just went to, to I mean, I'm in Toastmaster in our city, in the city of Perth. And I shared that uh, idea. And that was a big, massive, uh, like support from, from it. And today I'm allowed to share my about it. So what's next is called. So yes. what's next is the story, like having, you know, we're having, yeah. like interviews and also to allow people to know that they have a voice yeah they can share more yes and with covid we've seen the world has witnessed a rising number of mental health issues yeah. Yeah. so i'm just going to it's a bit vague but i'm just i have all the papers i have to work on it yeah but it's something that i want to to start because I love talking and I love to share my story. But also, what I said to you about my website, it's going to be independent on my website. Well, one is inspired by strangers, okay. and one is what's next. Okay. So you want, you just have a choice. You want to have me talking, or you want to see some written stuff oh. but it's going to be it's still on a drafting mode yeah and once it's uh i'm going to be you're going to be the first one to know because i'm sharing this to your channel okay. and i want to not only is uh, that we have to spread it yeah because it has to be a massive media support yeah but also working jointly with everyone because i'm not looking for a credit on myself yeah. Of course not. I want people to know that they have a voice. Yes. They can share, they have a way that someone is listening to them. Yeah. And I'm going to invite some of my friends who are specialists yeah. Yeah. And to go through a channel. Great. Time, time is running out, Mr. Dipad. In, in short, in closing, um, what kind of message would you like to, to leave us with. Always bring a beautiful smile. Even if you're on a mask, bring a beautiful smile with an eye contact to anyone. Wow. It brings a true connection and it gives the love, the joy, happiness to someone yeah. and also to both of you okay. because you are making a difference. To the whole thank you yes um and, and this is this is my last question and this is the question which i ask all my guests when it is all said and done how would you like to be remembered well should i share the same thing he was someone who was always talkative yeah he was always smiling and yeah. he was uh, he was always building connection with the unknown Wow. Thank you so much for your time. And I would like us to continue this conversation. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks. Yeah. Much love to you. You're welcome.